Hey guys, we need to have a talk. It's about Metal Gear Rising, which, welcome back, it's already LP. Uh, so the last episode featured a boss that uh, I wasn't totally sold on, so I kind of slept on it and was like, something's wigging me out and I don't know what it is. And it might be the boss mechanics, it might be how I felt like some bits were kind of wasted, and there was other things they could have done way better. Um, nah, their presentation was fine. Their presentation was actually really solid. Uh, I think I might be biased just because the dude brought up the M word. Have we talked about memes? I don't think in RDLP we've ever talked about memes. I don't like memes. No, not, uh, not, not internet memes. Internet memes totally different. We're talking about memetics. And memetics, like the... Uh, oh, I can't believe I have to bring this up in RDLP. Uh, but the, like, Dawkins, the Charles the Charles Darwin... Ch uh, Dawkins is... Charles Dawkins memetics idea. And it's garbage! It's like the worst white person philosophy bio pseudoscience ever trying to identify a core base unit of structure, like a unit for culture. Like we have atoms that build up matter. This dude's trying to piece together units of culture, which is, is a romantic idea. It's a romantic idea and that's why the dude Monsoon that we saw before was like this really romantic person, bigger than life uh, and just wants to control the world by controlling how they think and and combining that with like cultural pressures to get large bodies of people to move the way they want to do war is a cruel parent but an effective teacher its final lesson is carved deep in my sight that this world and all its people are diseased free will is a myth religion is a joke Controlled by something great. Means. The DNA of the soul. They shape our world. They are the culture. They are everything we pass on. Expose someone to anger long enough, they learn to hate. They become a carrier. Envy, greed, despair, the moon is far past the How about shit? Is that a mean? You can't fight nature, Jack. Wind blows, rain falls, and the strong prey upon the weak. Ugh. Sam tells me you see your weapon as a tool. Something that saves lives, a means of justice. Now there's a pretty meme. Exquisite. It spared you the burden of all the lives you've taken. Absolved you of guilt when you enjoy it. Um, it's romantic in the same way that how we thought of the atom in the 60s was romantic. Like, holy crap, the devastating power contained in such a tiny, insignificant little item like the, the atom, that's, that's beautiful. That's amazing. You cut it up, boom, devastation for generations. The idea is you can find the unit of measure to a meme and cut it up, and boom, you have massive effect on generations. That's really romantic. <laughs> That's a little bit far-fetched and really doesn't get to the main idea of what culture is or how it works. And why I say it's the most white person thing ever is because that sounds like colonialism. Colonialism is the idea that you can, uh, you can go to places and co uh, conquer them if not by force, it, by some kind of force, any kind of force, whether that's uh, military force or cultural force, which would be neo-colonialism. Um, cultural force being something that's very affluent in these kinds of things. And when I say force, force is not discrete. A unit of measure, like an atom or a particle, uh, is a discrete object. Like, we can measure the size of an atom. We can't measure the size of a meme in how they define memetics. Uh, 
and so I'm just like, God, I hate memes. I hate memes. You can see, you can see where I'm going with this. I freaking hate memes. <laughs> it's so garbage. It's so, it's, it's not dumb. It's very romantic. It's not like, it's not dumb because it inspires a lot of, um, much more important and, and bigger than Dawkins, his research. Um, kind of in the same way Freud, a lot of his discoveries were bigger than anything else. But if you go back and point the source, that's not gonna fly. It's 2017 now. However, seeing this pop up, and seeing this pop up in Metal Gear Rising as a video game is like, oh, that's nice. That's nice. And that's probably more forward than, and more modern than most of Metal Gear Solid's philosophies that they draw on. Like, they go, they go pretty old school with, like, existentialisms and, um, like, a lot of Sartre and a lot of Kierkegaard. Um, but this is straight on, like, let's talk about memes. Let's get real into the, the theoretical philosophies of how we understand culture. And I'm just like, God, I enjoy slicing this boy. And I'm going to slice the crap out of this samurai for being so, so, so basic. Um, but yeah, culture's a force. Culture's a force, like gravity. Something that pushes and pulls people together. Uh, what I, when I studied this in college, we didn't really call it memes. Uh, we had a weird way, because I go to a lovely little school. Um, we call it love. <laughs> I had a whole class dedicated to the forces of love, um, which essentially was uh, forces that defined and drew culture. Um, the thing that you're kind of confusing though, and we're gonna talk about this for a little while. If we, we'll get to Metal Gear Rising in a second because there's some cool shit that just happened. But memes, um, they can be defined. You can go to like TV tropes, which is a very important resource. You can go to TV tropes. Thanks Austin C. Howe for patreon.com backslash RDLP. You're the best. Um, he loves TV tropes. It's a great place. It's really important because that is a place where you can find discrete pieces of culture. You can identify something as a cultural artifact or a cultural object. That's what memes are. <laughs> but that is not the force that it has on other people. You can't dissect a cultural artifact and get to the cool part of it and then replicate that endlessly. Um, that's just not how culture works. And when we've tried that in the past, it has flopped on its face. What you're seeing right now in 2017 uh, is that is happening a lot with neo-nazi movements. The alt-right movements are trying to reciprocate the same cultural ideas that happened uh, less than a hundred years ago, barely, but less than 100 years ago, um, almost exactly 100 years ago, trying to create those same artifacts and those same like political forces and hoping they hold true within the context of a different culture. And it's not really having the same effect. It's not, there's parts that might be having results that are similar, but by and large, the effect is not not um, not the same. And maybe that's just my hopeful optimism because obviously we can't afford for that to happen again. We can't afford for a neo-Nazi regime to take power in one of the strongest, if not the strongest country in the world. But maybe I'm just being an optimist. Um, I don't think I am. I, I want to believe that I'm not Anyway, Metal Gear Rising just brought a lot of that out when I had to think about it for a second. So uh, this has been like seven and a half minutes about memes. This might actually be its own thing. I think I might make this little chunk its own little like, hey, side point. Uh, can we talk about this boy? Can we talk? I want to talk about this boy and his butt and everything else that's lovely about him. Um, yeah. Let's actually start talking about Metal Gear Rising now. <laughs> when we last left off on RDLP, we finished the third level. I think there's about eight levels, so we're kind of cruising, and I'm pretty proud of it. Um, also, I want to point out, this map looks like a little face. It's got a little face in it. You see, it's very happy. Um, we're also in this super surreal, like, just look at all this stuff here. This is kind of surreal that... Uh, there's just a lady here, like, sitting right there at the little point, and, like, looking at Raiden, and she's like, Hello, how may I help you, sir? 
Can you please put your weapon away? No, we don't do that here. Take it outside. We don't want any. Uh, like, what What the hell are we doing? And why did we just walk in to this place? And what was the whole point of the last mission where we snuck around dumb places and jumped on rooftops, although it was cool? Uh, <laughs> why did we do all that? We were just walking up to this, <laughs> the front office of this place. We cut down an elevator. We destroyed an elevator in a, in a skyscraper, and they don't need that. The newspapers didn't deserve that. Anyways, um, the most important thing, now that we've gotten off talking about Monsoon, we've talked about the last level and how we're in this weird place, um, let's talk about the most important thing. And that's that we have Psy now. We have a whole <laughs> tactical size. <laughs> There's... <laughs> There's nothing tactical about a sigh. <laughs> it even says, I'm sorry, this is so funny. It even says Lawrence Force. This is powered by Lawrence Force. <laughs> Lawrence forces are not a real force, but it's beautiful. It's like uh, just great little Star Trek ism. It's like we're f we're <laughs> powered by chaos. <laughs> Lawrence is the person who put together the chaos theory, and so adding his name as like a suffix to anything just brings about this like uh, just blithe, wonderful idea of like power, power that can't be controlled. And so it's just funny, and and and, and every time because I did it like a I did a research paper on Lawrence in like maybe that was like tenth grade. I was a sophomore in high school, and I just loved it because this dude was Chaos Man. He had chaos control in the palm of his hands. He took the Chaos Emerald up, and he's like this old dude. He's just like an old guy, who's like seems genuinely really nice, and made really cool shit happen in his lifetime. Um, Following Fleming's left-hand rule for motors, this force is generated by a magnetic field. You know, Raiden's gonna build a magnetic field. And the electrical current flowing through the Psy developed after careful analysis of Monsoon's battle data. Okay, excuse me. Excuse me, ma'am. I see you up there, just don't mind me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, just go this way? And I'm gonna go play with my Psy for a second. I'm gonna play with my Psy probably until the end of this episode. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we've got our normal sword. But do we have the Psy equipped now? No. Now we've got it equipped. Oh. Oh, that's... that's nice. Who is it a project... Oh yes, it is a projectile! Oh my god, can I use that to like... Ah, that goes to forever! Ma'am, you've got a little something on your cheek. Excuse me, <laughs> why is it purple? Oh no! I knocked over her bookcase. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! That's not what I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's Ripper mode? Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's been a bit of an episode, and I had to talk about that. Um, I need to remind myself. You should have already seen. You should have re-seen the monsoon thing, that whole monologue at the beginning of this because it's a great monologue. It's just fun, but also I totally missed looking at the cat petting bit, and so I just wanted to. I wanted to put that in the front of the episode, and I wanted to acknowledge that I did. I was so busy talking about some asshole dude in the background that I did not notice the cat on the far right of the corner. My bad. My bad. So anyway, uh, next time on RDLP, <laughs> this is a little like, is this like a filler episode? I don't know. I don't know. We just, we needed to talk about that. It was really, really important that we talked about that for, for me. I feel much better now. And now we can go beat up bad guys. So next episode, we're going to beat up bad guys. No ifs, no ands, no buts. Just beating up bad dudes. Anyway, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time on RDLP.